Tom Torero, podcast number 10. Hello, hello. This time, not on my own, with a special guest who I will introduce in a minute. A long-time day gamer and a very good friend of mine. Anyway, this podcast is all about something I've spoken of many times before, but I think it needs a bit of clarification because the community answer to this well-known problem, I don't think gives as much detail as needed. So when I was chatting to my good mate, who's in the room right now, funnily enough, he had a story from his last date and the history of this date that fits exactly into this category. And that category is princess behavior. So a very powerful, strong framed girl, maybe that's on the street, maybe that's over text, but more likely you're gonna see this kind of icy behavior from quote unquote high value girls pretty girls, beautiful girls on the first date or the second date. And obviously I always give the example of Russian girls, ice princesses, ice queens, and the fact that you have to hold your own. I think it's uh, David Data, Way of the Superior Man. He says the man is the tree and the woman is the little squirrel running around the tree and she needs that man to be solid. So uh, we're not having a go at girls. We're certainly not being misogynistic and saying they need to be crushed. They need to be punished. No, it's expected. Um, and it's a bit like a spoiled child, you might say, that you could blame the parent. So a really hot girl, a girl that's displaying princess behavior, she's ultimately just seeing if you're a man or a mouse. And it comes down to what this frame control. Now, here's the puzzle. Usually for frame control, what's the answer? People say B non-reactive so just let it all wash over you and that's all well and good but if you've ever been on a date with a madam you'll know that that's not an easy thing to do even over texts or even on the street initially that's not a good thing uh, an easy thing to do it's a bit like being in a classroom with a naughty child yeah you could stand there and let the naughty child kick off but there's got to be more so ladies and gentlemen if there are ladies listening let me introduce you to my good friend and 11 months old day gamer, Mr. A. All right, Mr. A. Hi, yeah, I'm very well. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for inviting me onto the podcast. I think probably the first thing I should say is that it was more like a tiger than a squirrel. She was a particularly lively um, character, is a lively character. She's not dead. <laughs> not, no. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I love, uh, Mr. A sent me this picture describing the date, and it was just one picture, and it was, <laughs> it was a man riding a tiger. And then I sent you one back of a, a man having his head in a lion's mouth. Mm -hmm. And that's what kicked yeah. off this podcast idea, really. Can you, can you, the guys need a backstory on this girl and the day game. Can you summarise that? Yeah, okay, just quick, just quickly. Uh, this is a girl I actually met for six months ago in, in a shop where she was working. I then took her out for a, a short date. Then we went out on a proper date. Uh, this was six months ago. And I did something a bit crazy. I'd only just sort of started getting into my stride with day game six months ago. I'm a newbie, really, for 11 months of experience. And I blew, I crashed and burned the date about 40 minutes in. I actually said, I don't think we have anything in common. And that created a massive row. She accused me of wanting to get her back that night and have sex with her. I said, yes, I think I was trying to do that. <laughs> she marched off, but not before giving me her saying that she could text me. Anyway, wind the clock on six months, because it went nowhere after that. And I sent out a New Year's invite, and she responded. I was surprised. I wrote the invite in Polish, gave it a sort of slightly personal touch. And she responded, and she came out on the date. It's only uh, actually five days since we went out on this date. And what, happened, what follows thereafter... Is, I mean, I've never been through an experience quite like it, to be fair. We had an inkling that she was going to be like this, obviously because six months ago, she must have displayed some kind of feisty behaviour for you to wobble a little bit. And what you did, you know, a little bit of freaking out and walking off. But I like the fact that you were quite sexual and you had a bit of a row, because we'll come on to why that might be good in a minute. Uh, you were reactive, essentially, six months ago. So what, what did she do six months ago that made you wobble a little bit? I think she was so blunt. So I, I, she, one of the first things she said when we sat down for a couple of drinks at the pub, I'd arranged a, a pub near my house. 
good was that shirt's too small for you i remember that was one of the first cracks she had at me classic 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 yeah shit test they call it in game but you know i don't i, I keep saying i don't like the word shit test because it implies it's they're doing it on purpose a lot of this is subconscious and she what that's a classic test she was testing you wasn't she i suppose looking back on it she was sort of challenging me sexually uh, i learnt enough about game to you know spice it up and keep it interesting and the first thing that i said to her on her saying i mean that but could i just say that i've never been out with a girl quite so hot in my life whatever i don't know what hot means exactly but to me she was tall she was blonde she was leggy she was beautiful she is beautiful i keep talking about in the past tense poor girl yeah but 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 back then it was a bit of a a, a was um, and the bar was just, people had parted around her. She stood at the bar when I arrived at the pub. And the first thing I said to her was, thanks for coming in shoes that match my eyes. Because she was wearing like these ridiculous turquoise high heels. Was she on time six months ago? Uh, she was actually early. Okay, in good. A kind of a slightly, she, she said she was, she texted me to say she was going to be late. And then she turned up early. Well, anyway, the real gold for, for guys listening to explain this concept of holding your own, not just being non-reactive, um, is what happened five days ago on date number, we can call it date number two really, can't we? Yeah. The I'm second saying, real it, date. It, yeah, the first date was just a little shopping trip that, that was just fun and stupid, mm. but no, it wasn't right. a proper date. So if we think about it, if we're thinking about it in terms of this tiger, uh, having a bit of a test, having a bit of a growl, and we should add as well that because you kind of stormed off at the end of that first real date, this could explain some of the initial behaviour that she had five days ago. But anyway, uh, can you talk us through all the drama that happened five days ago? OK, well, I've, I mean, setting up the date on the day, I have to say that to her credit, this girl's very direct and candid. But I found that quite actually quite refreshing because she doesn't play around. Anyway... I, but on the day in question, she did because we she was constantly moving the time of the date. So I suggested six o'clock. She said, can't you make it any earlier? I said, no. Uh, she then texted me back. This is all during the course of the afternoon of the date, the day of the date. I then texted to say, well, look, you know, when can you make it? I said I, I then was quite uh, direct. I said, fine, six o'clock at the wine bar and gave her the, the details of the wine bar. I checked my phone a couple of hours later to discover, I, I was assuming she would have just said, OK. I checked my phone two hours later and she said, that's too far from me. Yeah. Can't we meet in Mayfair? So it's classic, in game terms, it's classic frame control. So she's having a go. She's just seeing, if you're a man or a mouse, how much you're going to budge, how much you're going to um, pander to her whims. Because we should point out this girl seems to be used to being dated by wealthy guys. She leads quite... I imagine in some senses a glamorous lifestyle and she's used to guys that are a pushover. She's uh, you know, a self-confident, attractive girl. She told me on the date that guys on New Year's Eve were setting her up with bu ice buckets full of champagne. Yeah, provide a game. Um, so, so, but it, it felt a bit like, I didn't feel angry about it, but it was a bit like a horse that kicks out. Yeah. That's kind of how it felt good description yeah and i felt that he, and the funny thing was she then actually told me she had a job interview that um late that afternoon and therefore she actually put the whole date back to the time that i'd originally suggested so as we it's, it's a bit and like, then turned up late 30 by 30 minutes yeah classic it's, it's like when you're pulling in a fish reeling in the fish and the last bit is when the fish starts flapping like mad having a real go but instinctively, a guy would say, well, this looks terrible. You know, this is going to be a car crash date. Uh, this must be what she's like all the time. But one of those weird counterintuitive things in game is that if you recognise what this girl is doing, and we'll come on to what you did in a second, it can work in your favour. Uh, very. W that's a very weird idea, certainly for a beginner, that shit tests, if you want to call them that, are a chance to show yourself as a as an alpha male yeah yeah i felt that i actually ended up really enjoying the date because i felt she brought out the best in me she actually that all of this shit was challenged me now i had to sort of either i had to 
you know, fold under the pressure of it, crumble, crumble, or I had to actually rise to the challenge. So it really did feel like. Now it's interesting. The first proper date I had since I started day game was with a, a bird whom I had an instant date with, and she was kind of very sweet. And that found, uh, in a way, I didn't, I wasn't at all happy with that mm. day. It found really kind of, it was a different sort of princess behaviour. She just was, she just totally said nothing, did nothing, didn't really challenge me. Mm. Blah, 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 blah. They're harder. Yeah. I felt that was a hard, They're and I, I, would, I was very, I mean, I'm inexperienced still, but I was very inexperienced then. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I remember she played a little bit of ping pong with the whole setting up of the date too. I remember she said, oh, I can't find the, the, the bar. Can we, I'm, I'm getting back on the tube. Yeah, yeah, that's and at, at, classic. And at that time, I felt my world was about to cave in. <laughs> um, managed to say this time when I got when she turned up, when she rescheduled the date, and then she turned up probably over half an hour late, actually. And then the very first thing she told me was, "Oh, this job interview. I've actually got it at nine thirty now." This is the girl the other day. This is the girl from the other day. The, yeah, let's call her the Countess. Did you follow classic game advice? Because I always say to guys. And I always do this. If a girl is more than 15 minutes late, I certainly don't wait for her. I just go to the venue or I just kind of hide behind the corner somewhere. And I always make the girl come to me. And in my text, I say, you know, minus two points or you're getting the first drinks. Cheeky face. The one thing that I did do was uh, when she said, let's meet. The final message was, let's meet in Leicester Square. And I actually said, well, yes, but let's meet in the Hippodrome inside on the first floor bar. Oh, that's so good. at least I had the final word. No, that that's ideal. That's what I meant. You're not let. You're not standing there in the wind, in the rain, in the dark. No, I made flower. sure we were. It was raining, so I made sure we were undercover. Good. And and I like it in there, and I could gamble. And actually, what I did while I was waiting was I looked at the tables, and I actually, what when she arrived, I did actually gamble. Brilliant. That's it. That's a good little. Uh, nugget of gold there that that venue the hippodrome is not only legendary but it's a 24-hour bar it is one of the best secret date venues but cheers mr a yeah all right so let's get into more of her uh behavior more of her bucking okay so i mean as i said the first thing was she put a time constraint on me uh 9 30 which is a bit bizarre like we've got two hours for a date if that so uh, this kind of put pay to the logistics of planning everything. I mean, you know, when you go out on a date, you want to get the logistics right. Well, I now found myself in virgin territory because I couldn't really take it to the bar I wanted to and then take it to the place where we might eat later on. So I said, oh, well, that's it. We'll just have to go because of the time. We'll just have to go straight to Covent Garden. And I know a couple of, I had I'd researched a couple of good restaurants with with but uh, now you can hear the gasp <laughs> of listeners going what the fuck taking a girl to a restaurant well the advantage of these two restaurants is i know them both very well and they both have bars yeah so i take the girl to the bar we have a drink if she's if she's hungry what do you do so you've got a menu there and if she says i'm, I'm peckish you give her the menu and then you can take the date from the bar and sit down or no you eat, or you can eat at the bar <laughs> no you take it home but i should <laughs> i should point out mr a is a very um this is his style and he does it with friends and he does it with not that but he eats i mean with friends and if he was meeting me so it's very in keeping with mr a's style and i know the bars he's talking about there's one actually next to his house it's awesome so guys don't imagine mr a going to the Ritz and having a five course dinner. That's not what we're talking about. Even in that bar next to your house, it's kind of like snack food, isn't it? it like is, yeah, yeah. You could have a tiny little, it's yeah. like tapas in Spain. So I know what you're talking about. I, I wasn't, it wasn't like, let's go out to dinner. Let us have a starter. Yeah. But nevertheless, I know what you mean. Yeah. I kind of, in a way I felt, I, and I may have even said this as we walked to Common Garden, look, you got to get you back to the 9.30, got to get you fed and watered. And then that's it. Cause it felt like, she put this time constraint in the in mm -hmm. the frame and i was like fine get you back to your meeting at 9 30. take you have a drink feed you take you back like a horse back to the stables after you've eaten that's me. quite funny i mean in a way what else could i do i didn't know that they put the put to pay put pay to plans but it turns out as we'll come on to that that was another test because there wasn't a 9 30 was there no or she shifted it <laughs> what what transpired is she'd had a job interview earlier that day according to her um, and she was actually just going back there because she said to the guy after the interview, I'll come and see you later and we'll have mm. a drink together too. I bet she did. 
But anyway, let's let's get on to the juicy bits. Go on. How did she have a go? At well, you? well, the first thing was that she. I mean, I started to tell her a little bit of a story about uh, my first um, romance. You know, primary school with a girl, and I chased her through the corridors and tried. And she stole my milk and all that sort of good stuff. <laughs> So I went on with this story, and I kind of elaborated it like I do sometimes, and said and the police had to come round, and we had to go to this girl's house and arrest her, and we found, you know, crate loads of milk stashed. Anyway, it was a that's, stupid story. That's called the grounding story, Mystery would say. But, well, no, nice, well, I understand what you're doing. Well, I, I didn't want to tell a story, you know, I wanted to make it interesting, and, yeah. and get slightly sexual, and perhaps talk about more interesting stuff, and find out what she'd done for her childhood. Um, by the way, I should say before this, you'd already said to me on the way, you're short for a man. Yep, classic. You guys should be writing this down. Making fun of your shirt, um, being late, making fun of your height. Guys, be ready for this, particularly with very beautiful all Russian or Eastern European girls. These are classic, Mr. A. Well, I'm glad to be so. I mean, this was a mixed bag of a day. But anyway, so we, um, anyway, she cut me off with this story and she just said, that's a story. Stupid story. If you're going to sell a story mm -hmm. about your childhood, tell an honest story about who you are. This all sh this shit about you, the police coming around. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Mm. So she, she quite quickly. She, I mean, she was quite direct. That's but in a way that's quite nice. I remember when a girl looked at me. It was in Jewel Bar, Covent Garden, a couple of years ago, and I was telling some story, which was a true story about my childhood. And she just looked at me and she said, "There's something about you that." You've told that story. You practiced that story, and she had me. You know, at the time I was like a proper pickup artist, learning my structure, and she had me. And I always remember that, thinking, "Yeah, fair game," you know. So I, I actually felt that she was gaming me far better than I could ever dream of. In fact, I felt that I, the rule book was being ripped up in front of my eyes, yeah. and I had no choice but to somehow respond actually quite honestly. And, well, and directly. Well, good for you, and a bit of vulnerability and honesty, that's good. I should say, around about this point, she'd also made it crystal clear, and she'd said as much, you know, this is just a friendly drink, okay? But She's... again, listening to a girl's actions, not her words, Harry Met Sally, if you want to watch the movie about just that one line, that again, write that down on your list, guys, for another thing you're going to hear, uh, either really posh or really hot girls saying to you, uh, or bringing up a boyfriend a lot. She was actually doing touching me like that a lot as she was talking. I'm just on the arm. He's touching me on the arm. Nowhere else, officer. Um, and she, we were sitting quite comfortably at the bar. And you know, I felt like I didn't know what to do in terms of how to deal with the situation. But I, I remember I actually, and I felt like this kind of wasn't really out of the rule book, if you like, in inverted commas. Um, I just said, you know what? I really loved the way that in setting up this date and throughout, it's not a date she'd cut me off, it's just a friendly, yeah, yeah, and I went, yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. That's good. Um, she said, and I said, I just love the way you're so fucking direct. I think I may have actually even used fucking. Good. It's so honest and it's so refreshing. And you know what, as I said it, I felt tears in my eyes. Because I felt that I felt passionate about this. That in this world, so many girls are fucking around, playing these silly little games, and a girl who just knows what she wants. See you there. You know, uh, meet you at seven o'clock. Blah, blah blah blah. I know she played a little bit of a game on the day, but actually, up until that, she's been very direct. Well, that's good, and she wouldn't have been used to that. And that is. Um... I actually said to sorry, Clayton, the I, you can probably see the tears in my eyes. I actually feel quite passionate about this. Mr. A, is a, is a, <laughs> I'm welling up just at the thought of you welling up. I've never heard this happening on a date, but I can see why it would work because it's so honest and raw. And finally, as I'm going to come on to when I tell you my Russian stories, you're, you're not being non-reactive. So the message of this podcast is that sometimes like a good teacher, and I... I was a teacher and you try to be non-reactive, but a few times every year, kids just get on your nerves or they push buttons so much that you do. some teachers well up. I used to raise my voice a lot and very bluntly say what I was thinking to the class, you know, and what do you get? You get silence, you get respect, you get uh, like a father telling his child off, mm, but saying, yeah. look, I don't hate you. I love you. You know, you're my child, but I have to do this to you. 
And ultimately what that is, is setting the boundaries. It is being reactive, but it's not crumbling on her every question. It's just like knocking over the house of cards and just going, look, stop. And you did at one point go, did you go around well, to her I, I or did, did you I say... Mean, I, I, there was two, two other things perhaps worth mentioning about this day. I mean, the first is that she was she talks a lot. I, there was no problem with the conversation with this girl. I mean, she was... And I, at one point I just said, you talk a lot. That's awesome. That's the money. And I, and I actually... It, she was talking so fast at what, what one point, she slurred her words. And I went, blah, blah, blah. That's what you are, you're blah, blah, blah. Even better. And she went, blah, blah, blah. And she parroted it back to me. And it was quite funny. Because how, how many guys would have said that to her, you know? That's gold. Is it? I mean, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's used to guys agreeing with her, apologising for being short and... It was so funny. She was so funny. She was so stupidly hot and well-dressed. I couldn't believe I was in school. Anyway, she actually then at that point called us, I'm a bitch, aren't I, she said, you know, B-A-I-T-C-H. Yeah. And I said, yes, you're a bitch, or bitch, or whatever it is. I, can't, I don't even know if we used that word before. Biatch. Biatch, sorry. Mr. A. And that was funny. And actually, the rest of the date was easy after that initial yeah. interaction at the bar. And I, whenever she talked too much, I just did a zips sign with my... That, that is brilliant. And I'm, as you told me, you noticed a shift in energy and behaviour. After that interaction at the bar I've just described, there was a shift. And then we went and had dinner. And she used a swear word, you told me, and you walked around the table and slapped her hand. Yeah, that was fun. I mean, it was a real kind of tussle since then. She told me off for pincing napkins on the next table. And then she said the C word. I mean, proper let rip with it, too. And I could... I was shocked, actually. I stood up and I walked round to her side of the table and said, give me your hand. Yeah. And she did. And I went. <laughs> and it's awesome, mate. It's awesome funny. because you're you're not shouting like a man who's lost his temper, but you are being the father figure, the daddy. And, you know, there's lots of literature on why girls find this attractive. A man who lays down barriers, a man who like parodies, uh, a tough a tough kind of father figure and it, you see why it works with children children need barriers i'm not saying women are children but i'm saying ultimately when she's doing something stupid like having a go at your height or even being late they're looking to see if how you'll respond and her attraction for you after you kind of passed all those really crazy uh examples of princess behavior I, mean, I didn't think up. of them as shit tests or anything like that i just found myself in a situation I, i'm not saying it was easy it was quite it was hard work but it was kind of it was it's actually good fun yeah but can you imagine how many beginners or guys who knew nothing about dating i mean i guess most guys would have put up with it and been really uh, quiet I, and nice i think a year ago I would have, and this perhaps is the final sort of thing to say is, we did walk back, we had a lovely walk back, hand, arm in arm. I gave her my, my arm and she took it. Bingo. And she said she wanted to see me next week. and Proof of the pudding. And then I tried to kiss and she stormed off, so I don't know where that's going. But I'm hoping that we'll, that we'll, that we'll end up on a second date. But it was kind of a, a critical point, actually, which a, a year ago I would, I would have gone the wrong way. And that was when the waiter came. By the way, this is the waiter that she'd told to send. She'd sent the scallops back. And the head waiter would come out and she'd give him a broadside and he'd send him packing. She sounds like so a lovely she's girl. hard work. Um, but uh, she, did, she did it with a certain charm. But um, was the, the moment when the waiter brought the uh, inevitable check and brought the bill and brought the um, card reader and said, Sir, shall I put this on your card? And 99% of guys would have said yes. And I would have said yes a year ago and I just couldn't i just was not going to do this happening again in my life i was not going to go down this road Good for and you. i said put on half yeah and she and she didn't say anything and she paid half again because she that would have given you points because uh normally when she goes on a dinner date i'm sure she she hasn't paid for many dinner dates with with guys maybe i mean yeah. she did tell me during the course of the night jokingly that on new year's eve she'd been to some posh club and a guy had bought her a uh, a nice bucket with bottles of champagne and he yeah. basically financed her New Year's Eve at a posh club. A girl like this, and you list all of those behaviours she's just done, on paper you can see why a section of the um, the dating community, the pickup community, really there's a kind of a venomous hatred of girls in the dark corner of the pickup world. 
you, you know what I mean when guys yeah. are like bloody yeah. women taking my money and acting like this and bloody yeah. being late all women they just want to take my money that I, I hate women when the whole point of this podcast is we're saying if you can just chill out enjoy it enjoy it which you did and embrace it like use it as ammunition in a good way of showing her that you know you can be witty you can be smart you can tell her to be quiet in a nice way you can get her to pay for half of the thing and she says hopefully i'll see you she hopefully you're going to meet up this week or next week so um that was one hell of a parcel of hurdles you know the whole day gang bible packed into three, yeah three short hours and what a, like a learning experience for anybody it's like she going into, with sorry, muhammad ali sorry tom she but she didn't just to, to explain she but, well what was also interesting this time for straight never happened and that she she didn't uh, she she didn't have this we covered this i think earlier in the podcast she didn't actually have a no, nine thirty. That evaporated. So again, she 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 was happy to hang out and have have a couple of bottles of wine together. A mate of mine used to. He, he said he hated the word shit test as well. It, he preferred it feels, chance to show value. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, that's a really good point. I felt that I was actually kind of, uh, you know, I'm not too grateful, but you know, grateful for the opportunity, the experience because yeah. she challenged me and she, you know, she forced me to come up to the mark yeah and she's she's been um you know smothered in like a naughty child um you can explain her behavior because if she's been on all these dates where they've been pretty boring the guys paid uh they've just been weak and you know you can understand why a girl like that would be bored of going on dates why she would be a bit of a madam i always say to students imagine if you were a really hot girl yeah you know stop criticizing women hang on a minute if you were a really hot girl swamped yeah. by business cards and offers to go to Dubai. False promises. How would you react? Yeah. Looking at you as a sex object. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the feistiness is what me and Mr. A is saying is, is what should be embraced. And it's quite fun if you can kind of uh, st stand back and say, ah, I learned a shitload from that. Let's say you never see her again, but I think you will. It, it taught you a lot, yeah? He's nodding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to finish this podcast linking what Mr. A's just said with this really weird learning point for me in 2014 when I cracked something that I, di I didn't know how to crack in 2013 and 2012. And that's my regular trips to Moscow and the former Soviet Union. We all know these kind of girls. Uh, we know them from London. Um, you might know them from Miami if you're listening or from New York City or from Los Angeles. You know the type of girl that I'm talking about. Very, very self-confident, dripping in money that she mm. might have got from other guys, blah, blah, blah. And I, it was the missing piece of the puzzle where, puzzle where I could day game them like you. I could get their number. I could even get them on a date. And then I was faced with exactly what Mr. A's just described. Sometimes more extreme in Moscow, where they were very, very rude, just super hot. So I carried on. Maybe I had a second date and I never got anywhere. And I was playing this... Be non-reactive, be British, be intellectual, be quite nice. And I think it's in Terero Travels in the Ukraine where a girl pushes me so far with her rude behaviour that I shouted at her and kicked her out of my apartment. And this was early in the morning and then she came back and we slept together. Hmm. And that was one little thing in my mind thinking, oh, that's quite interesting. And recently this summer in Moscow, um, I was having a bad week, I was ill. And loads of girls had flaked and I went on a date with a girl and she brought up the topic of why what was happening in the Ukraine was all made up. And actually, you know, Russia was a victim, blah, blah, blah. The America had shot down that poor passenger airline. And I, something inside me and I was a little bit drunk after two Guinnesses, I snapped. Bang. Um, I'm not sure if you snapped like this on the first date, but I just started to be ruthlessly honest i was like you can't say that this is how it is do you know what i'm tired if you want to go just uh, go we we had a on the first day when i told her that we'd know much in common and kind of threw a spanner in the works because she was she felt too hot to handle sort of thing we did then have a very honest candid conversation and i said wouldn't it be refreshing if two human beings to uh, you know gone out on a date they decided in the first 40 minutes they weren't for each other and i actually <laughs> said this to her 
and they went back to their lives and then they didn't spend a whole three hours and ring up a bill <laughs> farting around playing games that's a mega push away and, and and you know what that first day as well as the second day i felt more like a proper you know a man i felt more of a stand-up guy yeah than i felt in a long time and she brought the best out of me yeah credit to this girl whatever you want to call her princess countess but betch she brought out the best it's hard to know where the line is because obviously Myself, you know rather than a, an artificial person but you don't want to shout like one of those crazy teachers who loses it because you'll probably never see the girl again on that date i think i just by chance hit it correctly so i yeah. was getting emotional she looked at me and suddenly shut up because she was a princess she just shut up and 20 minutes later she was back in my place it was it, it was all fine she was like a little cat so the message of this podcast i think this is why Miss, mr a and i wanted to do it is yeah non-reactive is good especially for beginners but with certain girls um, expect these kind of dates and embrace these kind of dates and at some point make it clear that you're holding your own i wanted to give a bit of homework uh, for you guys this week it is to check out um, a pdf or i think it's no it's a kindle book as well it's called pitch anything by a chap i'm guessing he's norwegian he's called oren Klaff, and he's not a day gamer or a gamer he's a businessman and the book's called an Innov innovative method for presenting persuading and winning the deal and someone sent that to me and i thought what the heck is this i'm not interested but all that little book is about is frame control in a non-angry way so if you're pitching a business idea if you're in dragon's den if you're talking to a um ceo or if you're sitting opposite a very dramatic um princessy girl it's kind of the same thing um it's about your conviction and who's holding the frame it sounds gamey it sounds manip manip manipulative but it's not it's just what mr a was talking about oh father time has 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 come full circle mr a indeed thank you for invite me onto this podcast pleasure. it's been really interesting talking about it pleasure i need a week because we've been having a beer and you're off to um to east I've london with a mate in westfield yeah very nice another day gamer indeed he is yeah a really good experience one are you, you going to do a bit of day game in westfield i don't know we might do we might but we're going to grab a pizza at some stage and perhaps perhaps it's another nugget that we shouldn't give all these nuggets away but westfield stratford is a secret destination it is that i never i see some europeans who can't afford the west end yeah, there's a community of Lithuanians, 20,000 Lithuanians live in Stratford, so get your ass over there, or we should say, no, don't. <laughs> go, to, uh, go to Shepherd's Bush or uh, Union Square, wherever you are. All right, boys and girls, say goodbye, Mr. A. Thank you, guys. Good luck with it all. Cheers, mate. I'll see you on a future podcast very soon. I'm off to Morocco tomorrow. I'll do some video blogs, I promise. I'll start that up again. Anyway, until next time, ta-da.